Hey, Emmett. Andrew, how you doing? Good, good. That was uh, very quick, wildly unexpected there. It was... Uh, <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> very good, very good. How's everything going? Yeah, excellent. I am uh, in a new location today. So I'm in the uh, I'm in downtown in the Rove in their podcast room, um, which obviously we helped uh, help set up uh, with Nexa and Podaholics. So uh, so yeah, representing representing downtown today. So decided a change of scenery as it were. And actually, you guys don't have the benefit of this, but what I have in front of me is Burj Khalifa. So it's pretty cool. So if you see my my kind of uh, my gaze flitter uh, during the show, it's because I'm obviously just in awe of the Burj Khalifa in front of me. Yeah, I've definitely got a location envy today, mate, in all fairness. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome down there. Okay, very cool. So what's, what's going on, yeah. Andrew? What's, uh, what's caught your attention this week? Are we just, just seeing now. So a few more people dropping in. So just quick, yeah. just we uh, we welcome to the show, guys. Um, if you're listening, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Uh, welcome to the Digital Growth Show. If this is your first time listening to the show or watching the show, this is our kind of weekly uh, weekly uh, show that we've got running now. I think we're on episode 27. Is that right, Amit? Yep. That's um, it. So yeah. So uh, we're going to be talking about kind of digital PR today. Uh, but we wanted to kick off things a bit different and, and kind of talk a bit around potentially something that's caught our, caught our kind of gaze this week. And uh, for me, it was actually um, to do with the lockdown back home. So back in the UK, uh, there, was a, there was a new lockdown, obviously, that was put in place, uh, I guess, last Thursday and the impact of that. But it was just quite interesting to see how brands reacted to that and companies reacted to that, in particular, uh, kind of Burger King, right? Um, I'm not sure if you saw this, what they what they kind of put out across their social channels. So I think first and foremost, obviously, you know, social has been a, a kind of key part to keeping people informed uh, from an online perspective during during COVID and, and how brands are communicating. But they basically put out a, hey, listen, you know, while, while, while kind of lockdown is back in place, we really want you to eat, um, you know, Whoppers, right? We want you to order burgers and Whoppers. But it's okay if you order Big Macs um, and any other kind of, you know, burger burger joints. Um, and, and I guess we're, in this part of the world, brands don't really talk to each other or don't really kind of, you know, take the mickey out of each other. But you see a lot of this in the, in Europe and the US, right? Yeah. And and actually, I mean, I think, I think something like that's great because obviously, again, when we're talking about sort of consumer brands like that where where you know essentially you know they need to get the word out they need to keep reminding people to you know eat burgers or whatever that is and um and again doing doing something with a kind of positive sort of pr slant to it yeah um you know it's always nice and, and look, the reality is is it's tough out there for everyone right and, yeah you know it's tough and i think you know again restaurants fast food whatever whatever that is i think everyone's everyone's going through a really kind of tough time right now and um yeah, and, and I think there's actual, people are quite open to um, sort of brand sentiment and things like that in the moment, right? So if you do come across a brand that seems seems a little bit more genuine, I, I get almost get a feeling that there's almost less kind of suspicious noise around it. It's more, okay, well, that's actually quite nice because, you know, I think everyone's everyone's going through the same thing, right? Yeah, 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 there does, there does seem to be more of an emotional connection with brands now. Uh, people are obviously very passionate about brands that they that they work with or they they ultimately um, you know buy from. And I think yeah, the ones that have that have shown some you know intelligence or or, or at least some character, right, um, to to kind of you know what's happening right now. Those are the ones that that are winning really. Um, yeah. You know, as, as as far as what's out there. So yeah, it was cool. It's cool to see that. I think. Um, and again, you know, the, the that motto is just kind of keep supporting everyone, not just kind of the big boys, but support the independent uh, restaurants and cafes and everything as well. So it's nice to see as well some of the kind of big, big corporates, um, you know, kind of jumping on this as well and, and, and kind of really, you know, engage with it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Cool. Anything else that's going on? Any, any other kind of um, things that have caught your eye or any announcements or... 
obviously the sorry, vaccine. You froze so- them. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. I was just to say, obviously, the vaccine yeah. is something that that's very kind of fresh and new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the um, I think the vaccine, uh, you know, and the stories around that, uh, obviously, is is quite interesting. I think um, some of the, I, I think, with all of this, you know, it, it's not there's not just one. There's there's a whole host that are hitting hitting the shelves, as it were. Um, I think it's positive sentiment that's attached to it. There's a lot of people leaning hard into that 10%. What happens at the 10% didn't react well or didn't, you know, kind of uh, perform as they were supposed to perform. What 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 kind of the character traits or, you know, biology make up of those individuals. But I think what 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 this does do is it does, you know, kind of potentially shine a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, yeah. So I think no one no one believes that this is going to disappear in the next few months. But at least this gives us some guidance as far as look. There seems to be progress obviously right so you know from a from a business perspective um i think you know these kind of positive sentiments you know help help just kind of form some decisions let's say uh you know moving forward right and and yeah, also yeah go on i was gonna say moving forward as well i mean the interesting thing is that as much as we went in lockdown in the uk um they announced that furlough was still going to be in place till march Right, um, which it, I think is also, you know, the other the other kind of interesting point. If we're going to just have lockdown for a month and you're furloughing till March, something doesn't seem quite, seem quite right there. Um, but I guess you know that's that's again something that caught my eye this week. Yeah, look, the narrative I think is interesting. So, um, so you've you've got so many different kind of, I don't know, opinions based on this. It was I don't know two or three weeks ago where everyone was saying, well, look, even if there is a vaccine. By the time we kind of roll that out across the world, um, chances are people are going to have to take it a second time because you know the effects of it wear off, mm-hmm. like maybe the flu jab or whatever it is. And and you yeah. know it's kind of um, you know so I mean I just laughed yesterday. You know, in a, in, well when I say laughed, I cried because all my tech stocks were just hammered, right? And uh, yeah, the stock markets yeah. in general were great, but I mean literally when when your Zoom shares go down. 17 or 18 percent overnight um yeah. i mean netflix i mean any 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 kind of business everything. that's benefited on apple the back, amazon everything. Yeah, any business that literally anyone that's benefited on the back of covid um and suddenly um you know there's there's you know news of a vaccine and 20 percent of your valuation is knocked off um yeah. that's that for me is like well, A, I think there's some cheap shares this morning. But the, the, second, <laughs> thing, the, second, the second thing is, um, you know, again, what happens to the whole, it's going to take so long to roll out. And yeah. then how effective is it really going to be? We're not totally sure. And actually, is it going to be totally effective unless everyone in the world has got it because this is a global pandemic? So, so yeah. right. And, and again, it, I think it just kind of raises more questions. But, but yeah, I was kind of like... Um, you know, I think at about an, an hour or two after the markets opened, I was like, eh, okay. And then by about 1 a.m., I had another look and I was like, Christ, if I'm going to get some sleep tonight, it'll be quite nice because it was like, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was quite a blow. <laughs> Let's yeah. just leave it there. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 felt, I felt your pain. I just, uh, I, I kind of looked at it and I was like, oh, this looks pretty handy. And then, yeah, when it was one o'clock, it was similar kind of, hold on, what happened? Did I, did I wake up and, uh, you know, just fell asleep? So, yeah, I think they're, they're, I mean, obviously that does have the impact. It just, it's odd, as you said, that, you know, well, okay, now there's a, a, a sniff of a vaccine, all of those services that, and, and I think, you know, that we've kind of benefited from. I, I wonder, I, I don't, I think we've gone so far down the road now that I don't think people are just going to be able to turn back. So there's been huge investments in infrastructure from an e-commerce perspective. A lot of kind of retail space has moved online. There's changes in, you know, industries across the board. If you look at real estate, you look at, you know, hospitality, you you look at events, conferences, all of these things have been impacted dramatically. And, And to just say, oh, okay, cool, everything's back to normal now. So let's just wipe, you know, that last 10 months off the map. I don't think it happens. Um, no, and, so, and, and, so, I think, yeah. and, yeah, and I think the biggest thing is you can you can make all the changes that you want. Uh, people's habits are in place. And I'm pretty sure that even tomorrow, if there was a vaccine and, and Dubai was fully cured, trying to get everyone back into our Dubai office, I think it would be impossible. Yeah. You know, I think there'll be, there'll, there'll be a ton of objection. And um, because people are used to 
working in a certain way now and you know in the same way that it maybe took them a few weeks to get used to it yeah. to now you know to now be again inefficient because you're now commuting with a million other people yeah. or whatever it is in the morning you say so you're losing an hour in the morning hour on the way home you know all of that kind of time which you kind of managed to reclaim disappears the efficiencies of zoom calls rather than driving to meetings i mean for me like i said i think it's in cheap stocks in the morning on the back of uh, yeah. the ludicrousness that happened last night but but yeah look good news about the vaccine and and you know happy to kind of well let's see what happens right Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I uh, at the very first, um, the very first, I was listening back to some of the old shows, and the very first digital growth show, you asked about a crystal ball, um, and I put a date on August or something. Um, so I was way off, um, but I, but I think you know, no one has that crystal ball, right? So you know, it just uh, it fluctuates at the moment. But uh, I think things that are that are moving in the right direction does help. Cool. All right. So guys, thanks for joining us again. Um, so. The way that the show works, in case it's the first time, because I can see quite a lot of new faces today, or new names, sorry, don't, don't get scared, I don't mean faces. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for the way it works, if you've got any comments, any questions, anything like that, shoot them through uh, as they kind of come into your heads. And um, Andrew and I will do our best to answer each and every one of those. Um, but yeah, Sanju, digital PR, should we get kind of started with that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, um, I think probably the interest and in, in kind of people signing up is who know us um, probably are asking the first question, what does Nexa know about PR? Um, so they, they get the digital piece, um, but, but they, they may not be, uh, they may not be, uh, you know, they may not understand why, why we're even having a conversation about PR. I mean, they, I, I think, um, so we, we may want to address that first, I guess. So, I mean, if we're, if we're talking about digital PR, how how are we defining it, mate? What are, what are we what are we what do we class this as? What do we frame it as? Okay. Um, actually, we had a, we had a ton of PR companies uh, register for this show today, so um, <laughs> so that was, that was, so we've got to take yeah. care of it possibly. Um, so look, I mean, I, I, you know, the thing the thing is, I kind of look at I look at kind of digital PR almost like digital marketing. In a sense, uh, you know, it's, digital marketing is its own real entity, right? I mean, it's not now. Yeah. You know, you can't really class marketing and digital marketing in the same in the same way that perhaps you be you were able to, you know, in the early days. But yeah, to, I mean, the reality is, digital PR. What we're looking at there is just it's a strategy that a company can use to kind of increase its online presence. And I think I think it can be as simple as that. Um, or it can be kind of, you know, much more complicated, but the reality is anyone who is engaging in digital PR, they just want to include, increase their visibility online. Uh, they want more eyeballs to kind of, uh, you know, see their brand, see their products, see their messaging, see their way of doing things, you know, maybe it's for leadership, whatever, whatever it looks like, but on a purely kind of uh, digital sense is probably kind of how I would define it. Yeah, and I think, look, I, I, I think we're going to kind of dig into this uh, pretty deep today. And, and I think what we should say kind of top of the show, as we do have uh, a lot of friends in the in the power industry that are joining us today or, or perhaps listening, the, the, the fact is that we're just here to have an open, honest, frank discussion. Um, and that's, that's what we've done throughout this show. So if, if it's the first time you're watching the show, um, it's a bit warts and all. Uh, we're, we're kind of open and honest about good, bad, ugly, even the so obviously associated to Nexa um, and partners. And so I think it's it's we wanted to we wanted to kind of move into this subject and have a conversation around it just to just to kind of understand the real value, uh, right? Because I think everything that that obviously you know it, from a decision perspective now there's there's value and there's ROI. That's, that's what's on every kind of business owners or individual that's making decision on budgets. Those, those are the two kind of points. Um, and, and look, I, I think you and I perhaps in the past have, have um, 100% you know, felt, well, what is the real value of, let's say, traditional PR, right? Um, in, in, in that sense, where, where does it go? So, I mean, if we, if we think of like traditional PR, I mean, how, how, is, how is this different, mate? You know, what, what are we talking about here when we say that digital component? Yeah, look, I think, I think, the, I think first and foremost, it's, it's much more about kind of, um, 
looking at digital from a much more kind of integrated approach. So the way I'd kind of look at it is, um, and, and I think maybe the, the sensible place to start if I backtrack a little bit, is how does digital PR sort of uh, compare to traditional PR, okay? Sure, yeah. And, 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 and I'm not talking about the sort of new hybrid PR where every PR agency does social and all that kind of stuff, but yeah. real kind of traditional PR where we're looking at kind of, you know, media relations and, and things like that as being sort of like the key driving point. So I guess what it is, is, you know, from a kind of digital PR perspective, we're looking at kind of PR or media activities, um, you know, with a full kind of digital focus, okay? So not just about, okay, getting an article in Publication X or having an interview on on, on this radio station or yeah. getting, a, you know, a TV interview, or whatever that is, right? But we're talking about now with digital PR, almost like full integration into um, lots of different areas of digital marketing or, or you know, marketing now. And and by that, we're talking about, you know, things not not just social media, but we're looking at things like, maybe SEO, for example, and search visibility. And, and I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in a bit. But things like lead generation, right? So again, I think when you when you you went mentioned ROI, yeah. well, what does that what does that really kind of equate to, right? And I think it's really difficult for any PR agency or any company that employs a PR agency um, to say, right, we had an article that was printed here and our sales increased by, you know, seventy-seven point four percent, right? Yeah. And 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 be able to really stand behind those numbers. And I think with digital PR, we can actually get a lot closer to that, right? Because of all of the tools, all the technology, and all of the integrations, and that kind of fully integrated approach in digital marketing, where we can actually say, well, actually, you know, the fact that you had a mention here or were on that podcast here we have been able to attribute that back into revenue, right? Yeah. And I think, and I think for me, that's that kind of um, next layer and, and not just the next layer, this is where companies need to go, right? Because again, if you're yeah. spending money now and money is going to be possibly scarce for the next year or two, um, then actually you need to be able to prove results and really prove results, not, not kind of say, hey, you know, you've had, this this many kind of eyeballs on this magazine or whatever it is, I don't know. Um, but there's got to be some level of revenue attribution back to what's been done. And I think that's that's where digital PR really comes into play. So, I mean, I guess then, I mean, we're, we're talking about that kind of disruptive nature, right? Um, so similar to possibly, is this is this where we saw the early rumblings, let's say, of people moving away from traditional media advertising, right? Uh, magazines, radio, billboards, um, you know, and, and that early shift across to like digital campaigns, like, you know, in, in, in kind of, there was that shift again, where it was, how do you really draw value from a billboard on Shakeside Road. I just happen to be on Shakeside Road. That's why I'm obviously talking about it, um, you know, down to real customer or real impact on revenue. Um, and then moving that across to obviously digital advertising, where it was a direct line and direct correlation. So you, you, are you saying that the kind of, the, this is this is potentially that transition away from, as you mentioned, the kind of, I guess, um, you know, eyeballs or this many headlines or, you know, acquainted value. I mean, I, I sat in one meeting where they counted subscriptions and then times the cost of subscriptions to the subscribers to get the overall value of, of, of a placement of, a, of an editorial. So, I mean, is, is that what we're kind of looking at? Are we looking at this kind of shift, that momentum? I, look, I think, I think, look, how many years we've been in the industry for... A long time, right? I mean, close to twenty years. But yeah, let's not age ourselves. Just a couple yeah. of years. But, just a couple of years. But, the, but we remember those early days, right? And and again, you trying to trying to almost speak sense to brands that are all over digital today, but at that yeah. time saying, hey, you're spending so much money on 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 this form of marketing, this form of advertising, whatever it is. Yeah. Why don't you spend a fraction of it here and start to kind of actually measure results? And and yeah. people weren't interested, right? I'm kind of hoping that we're not right there and we're not, you know, in the same place with this because obviously kind of digital marketing and digital technology and, and people's understanding of, of what yeah. it is today is involved. 
But, yeah. you know, I don't think we're going to be, um, you know, we're not, what this isn't going to be is a replacement, right? This isn't going to replace uh, traditional PR. I think let's just kind of, in my mind, let's just kind of lay that out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think there'll always be people who, who need, uh, you know, a PR agency for a number of reasons. Um, you yeah. know, for example, pri- crisis management isn't something yeah. that maybe a digital PR campaign can fully solve, right? Yeah, yeah, that may, yeah. You know, you know, and those kinds of elements, those kind of really valuable things that PR agencies do, yeah, are, they're not going to be replaced by this. So there's always going to be a kind of big role. Now, are we going to see a shift or a migration from um, traditional PR to digital PR? Well, I also think yes. I think there'll be okay. some form of migration. The reasons are fairly obvious. Okay, so firstly, um, and again, you were talking about the metrics where you're in a meeting. I've sat in meetings where people have pulled out, um, you know, PR reports and press clippings and all of that kind of stuff. And again, the calculations are right. This magazine has, you know, yeah, whatever it is, twenty thousand subscribers. Many subscribers, yeah. But actually, seventy thousand people read it because you know coffee tables and all that and stuff. Well, yeah, I ain't, I'm not touching any magazine that I see on any coffee table probably <laughs> ever again, right? Because <laughs> you know we all know COVID lives on surfaces, and listen, I ain't touching yeah. it, right? So yeah, all exactly, of a sudden yeah. now, but does that make it valid? The second thing is I'm not out as much, so I'm not exposed yeah. to things like that anyway. Third, yeah. I can get all of my information, news, research online i've bought one on magazine phone. on my phone i bought one one magazine um since covid started which is the harvard business review a few months back uh, which i don't even class as the same kind of publication in that sense anyway because yes yeah. right um but but essentially you know it's but if people are paying for that it's interesting you know and obviously people are listening to the radio and are watching more tv and all that. okay we get yeah. all that right um, but actually what this has highlighted is that there's a big result for digital PR. And I think that's it. And we spoke about content consumption last week as well, right? So this yeah. isn't just yeah, yeah. this isn't just a kind of, you know, let's just pull an opinion out here. All the no. data is telling us this. So content consumption is like what, 48% higher than what it was uh, pre-COVID? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's huge. So, so there's a greater appetite for content and that content is online and therefore there's a potential greater appetite for digital PR, right? I don't think we're crazy to draw a line between those things. Yeah, and I think we will dig into this a bit, but I think there's actually, as we've seen, an appetite for real value content as well. So not not something that may be an advertorial, right? That's a piece that is basically just a promotion piece, right? Um, that doesn't offer any real value to the reader. Um, it just, it's just, you know, a bit of a kind of ego boost for, for the individual or the company perhaps that's, that's kind of got that advertorial or, or, you know, I I think people want real tangible, you know, practical content that they can do something with. And that may be, you know, enrich them or, or highlight them or, or whatever, you know, enlighten them, but, but they're looking for that as well. They're not looking for PR pieces as it were, right? Yeah, and I think I think there's some I think there's some validity in that. I think you're right. And the, the other and thing I want to it, say, it, 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 sorry, it just may be the way as you said that we're changing because previously, for example, you would sit there in a Starbucks, pick up a magazine, or sit in the business class, you know, in the lounge, and kind of read the magazine or read the newspaper. As you said, no one's doing that anymore. So what you're doing is you're choosing to subscribe to a particular application, or you're choosing to subscribe to like you know Wall Street Journal or something like that. And then you're picking and choosing those articles. So you're not browsing anymore. You're not discovering as much, right? You're, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're targeting your, your own activity, right? Well, true. But then Google search is also on increase, right? So, yeah. so again, again, people are searching for more content and are probably exposed exactly. to it. Right. So, so it isn't been just limited to maybe a small handful. And I think that's also a big difference between traditional PR and digital PR. Yeah. And, and, you know, digital PR, you're talking about potentially engaging and collaborating with thousands of different publishers around the world, as opposed to, I don't know, 10 or 15 applicable ones in your own city, right? Yeah. You know, and I think that's, that's really interesting for me because now you've actually got scale in a sense that, you know, before, let's look at traditional advertising and digital advertising, right? Yeah. You could reach, you could reach 
clusters of people, you know, within localities through traditional media, digital yeah. suddenly opened the door to say, actually, do you know what? I want to now market to people in I don't know, Nigeria, for example, right? Yeah. And um, and then you could literally two clicks and you've now got an audience in Nigeria that you can, you know, expose your business to. And I think again, digital PR now kind of allows you real kind of scale, right? And and if you mm. wanted to get aggressive, well, I think that be, you know that becomes now honestly infinitely more possible than it would be through kind of traditional PR. Yeah, and we've said this over the last couple of weeks that you know it, it's it's probably a cliche, but the world really is your oyster now. So you know, there's there's the, the, because of the way that we've changed the dynamics of conversations, the dynamics of Zoom, the the you know open acceptedness of online and and pretty much base yourself anywhere in the world. Um, you know, now now there's a there's a wider opportunity to approach that bigger audience. So why why just fish in your little pond, right? Yeah, no, very true. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think, look, I, look, there's, there's, there's definitely something I think which is super interesting with with digital PR. Um, I, I look at any. I guess how we can look at it is in the past, um, you've got many kind of you know look at many industries right where you've got um, brokers or people who are kind of mediating between companies and or end users and. And, um, and maybe, you know, publications and stuff like that, if we look at it from a PR sense. You know, in that world, the kind of PR agencies are very much kind of like the gatekeepers. And, and you know, a lot of that came down to relationships with editors, relationships with yeah. uh, writers and contributors and people like that. Um, you know, one of, the, one, of my, one of my PR friends was telling me, like, actually, they've been okay because they... <laughs> their expense account has basically been untouched in the last sort of eight months, right? <laughs> and, and normally yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a substantial expense, you know, where they're kind of whining yeah. and dying different editors and, yeah. you know, and, and, and that, you know, I think any time you're kind of removing, I don't know, relationships or, or something that's perhaps slightly unnatural um, and, and almost leveling the playing field, I also think is pretty cool, right? And that's the yeah. same way and that's the same way Facebook and Google have grown because they're quite happy to work directly with that end user. They don't want it. Yeah. I mean, they'd prefer not to go through agencies. You know, and we yeah. know that because we've had conversations with, you know, with Facebook and Google and, and they're like, they understand the value that agencies bring in. But actually, they also know that the end user is perhaps less educated and will probably spend a lot more money with them and, yeah. and maybe not in the right place. So if it comes down to pure profit, they're okay working in that field. You know? That's right. So, yeah. so I don't know. Look, I think I think there's there's a lot that we kind of kind of dig in here, but um, so, so I mean, so so I mean, what it, what does it look like then? So we kind of know what 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 it is and and, yeah. and kind of how it differs and and potentially, obviously, you know, the the impacts of it. And as you said, this is very much um, complementary and 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 kind of you know uh, parallel path, as it were. But but what, what how does it differ? So if we if we understand you know what PR is, let's say as as far as as we said, helping to get visibility, let's just class it as helping to get visibility for your brand or your company or individual within the organization across you know publications, uh, as you mentioned, you know like newspapers, magazines, um, you know getting getting your message out there. How does how does digital PR look? How does it look different? Basically, what's different about okay. it? What does it look like? Yeah, so look, there's obviously some level of crossover because maybe, maybe you get an article in I don't know, Entrepreneur Magazine and they publish it on their website yeah. as well, right? Yeah. So essentially, what we're talking about is articles on um, third-party websites, uh, or essentially websites that aren't owned by your business, right? So yeah. somebody else's somebody else's publication, and and you know that could be news sites, it could be you know, information sites, it could be at very kind of industry specific sites, right? You know, yeah. but but I think where it gets interesting is, you know, rather than focus on, hey, we need to get an entrepreneur. Well, actually there's probably about, I don't know, there's probably 500 other online business journals, um, you know, which can actually, again, provide that same visibility and perhaps even more, right? If you start to aggregate some of these. Yeah. So I think that's, that's the first thing. So I'd say it's articles and websites that aren't yours. Okay. Um, podcast, Andrew, you're, you're, you're an avid podcaster. So things like, yep. um, 
that mentions appearances on on podcasts, webinars. I mean, look, you you guys run a, a tech show with uh, with Dr. Pike away, right? Yeah. And um and and you're mentioning kind of brands on there, right? All the time because you're talking yeah, about yeah, all the time, yeah, like every that. week yeah. talking about different brands, tech brands, yeah. Right, and a lot of those times, those brands are coming directly to you, saying, "Hey, here's our new product. Can you speak about it?" Right. So that's yeah. that's digital PR, right? Because what they're doing is they're identifying who um who their audience is, and then they're saying, "Okay, well, who is it that our audience are listening to?" Right. Yeah. What is it that our yeah. audience are reading? You know. So that's kind of how that's reverse engineered. Um, the other thing is, um, again, you know, any any influencers. Let's talk about influencers because I think influencers play a part here. Um, but again, you know, let's talk about, um, you know, whether it's mentions from influencers and collaborations, uh, if it's not influencers, is it kind of people who matter, right? So there might be an industry leader who maybe yeah. doesn't class themselves as an influencer, but actually yeah. how much impact do they have, right? Uh, on yeah. their audiences, right? So, so these are the kinds of, you know, this is really where kind of, um, you know, digital PR comes in. And again, we, we very quickly mentioned webinars and but webinars, videos, anything visual as well, right? So if you've got, you know, YouTube channels and, and you know, again, people where someone can talk about your products, your brand, your services, your, you know, whatever that is, again, that's, a, that's another digital PR opportunity. Okay. So, so essentially, I mean, it's all those digital touch points, right? So anywhere that you may have, um, you know, content that is being distributed effectively, to a particular audience, either a kind of, you know, super wide or as you said, super specific audience. It, it's basically, you know, leveraging, leveraging all of those, those various digital touch points. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so I guess, you know, straight away, we, we kind of look at that and go, yeah, okay, cool. That makes sense guys. Um, I get it. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to be more visible. Right. So, yeah. so I'm, I'm going to be more visible. Um, thanks. But I mean, what, what else is, what else is there like that? You know, that's the kind of flashy part of, of obviously PR, yeah. um, as far as you're going to be more visible, you're going to be out there, you know, more of your target audience are going to interact with your content. Um, but, but what else, what, what, why is it so crucial? Like, why is this important? So look, I think I think there's a number of reasons. Um, look, first and foremost, that visibility can also be seen as a as an endorsement or a pat on the back, right? So, so again, okay. if somebody's yep. talking about your product, your service, your business, yeah, uh, you know, a digital endorsement. Obviously, we know that that carries value. Okay, yeah. Um, but I'd also go back and say, look, uh, let's look at the metrics. So things like uh, look. One, one of the main reasons, if I've got a client who under, doesn't understand why they should have any kind of digital PR, um, but they rely on uh, Google, for example, to generate yep. sales or leads, you know, I always say to them, look, Google's algorithm is built for digital PR. Okay. And then I kind of explain right. that a little bit more, but, but essentially, you know, Google's uh, a key part of Google's algorithm, right? When we just to kind of go back into what they look at, they look at the technical elements of a website and they say, right, does this yeah. site load properly? Does it render properly on mobile devices? All that kind of stuff. But the other side of Google is, okay, who is talking about this website, right? Who is, um, you know, who is kind of endorsing this website? Who is essentially talking about this company, talking about this website and providing a link back to that website? And that's huge because yeah. that, that is still, I think, one of the main sort of determinants of how companies are ranking on search engines. So, yeah. you know, you, you have all of the things that you do on your own website, which is create content and all of that kind of stuff. But now through digital PR, if you've got the opportunity to essentially create articles on other people's website or they create articles on their website about your business and give you a, a link back, well, that now plays into the hands of uh, you know, Google search algorithm, then you're going to now rank much better on the back of it. Okay. The byproduct of that is website traffic, right? So the fact yeah. is you rank better, that means you get more traffic, right? All of the stats show us that. Now, yeah. if we're now targeting the, you know, exposure in the right types of publications or the right podcasts and things like that, I think placement is really key here. Um, and look, traditional PR are kind of like masters when it comes to placement, right? But yeah. Placement is real, you know, is really key. 
And if you get it in the right place, that means that the traffic and, and you know, the additional kind of visitors that you're going to get to your website are going to be more qualified. And if they're more qualified, that gives you more selling opportunities, right? So okay. we can now start to draw a line between, hey, somebody saw a link, where did they come from? Uh, did they make a purchase? Or yeah. we now rank higher for this keyword on the back of that article that was created. How has that generated more revenue? We can start to measure that very accurately. And then I guess the final part of this is uh, Google next year. I think they've got to a point now where they really understand this. And next year's big algorithm change, which they told us about, and, and bearing in mind they never tell us about any of their algorithm changes. Yeah. They basically said that next year website engagement is going to be a key metric, right? So if people right. are coming onto your website, how engaged are they? Because they want to be able to see that um, you know, if you've got a good quality website, um, they should rank you better. But the key to quality, you know, quality traffic, I guess, is making sure that, you know, you're getting links in the right places and you, you've got the right kind of referral partners. You know, so, so I guess, you know, that's where I say the technical side and that sort of crossover now between say, hey, let's create a content and, and let's now, you know, put it in a magazine to now that kind of digital side of it i just think it gets, becomes a little bit more scientific yeah and, it, and, and it, it's a bigger play as well because yeah. then what you're doing is you're you're adding real value um to your business right and you can actually draw a tangible line to show where that value is coming from okay yeah all right so 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 then if we if we kind of if we i mean you know it, it's it's hard to argue against this um really as far as as far as the value that it's providing um but but how does it how, how do we, you know, how do we kind of go about it? So, you know, you, you obviously mentioned that, you know, a key key driver of this, key factor of this is is Google, um, you know, and, and understanding obviously that um, uh, that that's a large part. So, so how do we actually, you know, start to identify what type of digital PR we need to get involved in? What type of content? Wh where do we put it? How do we put it? What what's what's the kind of metrics of that? Okay, so look, I think I think the process of getting it started is is very much kind of based on uh, research and identification. You know, in terms of you need to identify opportunities, right? Okay. And 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 first and foremost, I think it, 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 this is going to be very unique for every business, uh, or at the very least, if you want to kind of widen that out, it's going to be very unique for every industry. So mm -hmm. you're going to basically look and say, okay, look, if I'm going to target these types of customers or these types of people. Where are they? Where are they? Like, what are they reading? You know, what are they listening to? What right. are they watching? Okay. Okay. Right. And, yeah, and, yeah. and again, you know, I think that's where that kind of traditional PR kind of crossover comes because a key part of this is making sure that we're, you know, we're targeting the right publications and the right opportunities. But you've got to start with your audience for that, right? And, um, and if, yeah. you, if you get the audience wrong, then this could potentially be, you know, a bit of a kind of wasted exercise. But, but again, today, um, there are so many kind of very, very cool digital PR tools, brand new ones as well, you know, because I feel as if this is now almost like that next big industry. Um, right. And, and, and the tools that are out there are, are very kind of helpful in our kind of identifying, you know, YouTube channels, podcasts, uh, social media platforms, Twitter accounts. I mean, the whole kind of, you know, space as well as obviously websites, right? You know, you need to have your content yeah. placed on this website because, you know, this is what your audience are engaging with. And and I think those, okay. you know, so so all of that's very kind of possible. And um, and I think it works. I think it works really well. And and obviously because this is all digital, there's there's real data there, right? So this yeah. isn't kind of guesstimate, right? It's not a, oh, well, I think this person read this. No, because this person is linked back to a subscription. They, you know, religiously engage with the content or, or whatever, right? Everything is trackable. Yeah, and the point is, is, and I think this is where Google have got it right, because, you know, the, the way they work is very much focused on, look, if enough people are endorsing a website, we need to give that website a bit more love, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we get better people or high, more high qualified people endorsing that website, we give it even more love, right? Yeah, so, okay. so, the, so the way this kind of works is, you know, again, we want to target 
things like different publications and different podcasts. Most podcasts have got their own websites and all that kind of stuff now, right? Yeah. And so you, you can start to measure actually how valid each of these are, how strong they are. Um, okay. Right. And, and so you look at a few things. I think you look at things like credibility. Um, the way that we kind of look at credibility today in the digital world um, is we look at maybe the domain authority of a website, which is the okay. same, which is the same kind of ranking indicator that Google uses. Um, yep. and, that, and that domain authority is, is like, essentially it's, you know, if we go on to uh, Forbes, right? So Forbes.com or ForbesMiddleEast.com, whatever it is, if yep. you go onto that website, um, behind the scenes, Google have worked out a numerical score of anything between zero and 100 for that okay. magazine, okay? Yep. And, and now if Forbes mentions uh, another website in its publication, essentially what that other website is getting a pat, is a pat on the back from Forbes. And Google yeah. picks that up because it's tracking every single one of these links, right? Right, okay. So, so I think that's where it gets interesting from a kind of domain authority perspective because now we've got actually a measurable uh, scale, right, naught to 100, where actually we can not only kind of identify maybe industry publications, but we can actually see, does it make, you know, we can actually determine very quickly, does it make sense for my business to be listed on there. And, and one very quick example of that is, uh, I'll give you an example, the Nexa blog. The Nexa blog has a domain authority of uh, 54, right? Which is pretty good. Now, yeah. if you get, you know, basically a collaboration opportunity with somebody who's got a domain authority of say 35, actually the impact of that link from that 35 to our 54 website is gonna be very limited, right? But if I had a collaboration opportunity from someone who's got an 85 rank, right? And yeah. that now suddenly has value because all of a sudden now I'm getting a big pound back, right? Okay. And if we put it into some sort of context, you know, your websites, which are 100 are Google, google.com yeah. essentially, Facebook, <laughs> Funny enough. right? You know, Facebook, but real kind of, you know, the BBC, actually I think BBC is yeah. not even 100. But but basically right. you've got to be you've got to be really kind of up there in terms of full credibility and, and all of that. Yeah. So um, you know, so that's that's kind of like how how you kind of then understand. So you 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 identify the, the audience, you identify the opportunities, then you try and find whether the or try to qualify whether these opportunities make sense for that business or not. Okay. And and then I think the other part of this, which which you know we're seeing with some clients already is is uh, perceived I don't know perceived prestige okay because I think right. a lot of people do engage in uh, engage with PR companies um, and perhaps smaller businesses because they do want their article published in uh, published in perhaps a Forbes right yeah you mentioned Forbes so let's for get sure. to that right so they might say yeah. hey I want a picture of me and I want my article and I want my content in yeah. Forbes and you know I'm paying you to do that. But um, that kind of prestige element, I think, becomes really interesting when you start looking at domain authority, right? Okay. Because because maybe Forbes doesn't have the same value back as a higher domain uh, website, right? Um, right. And the actual net impact of that higher domain website might be better in the long term for for that client, right? Then okay. does that make sense? Yeah, but I'll yeah. tell you what. Let's 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 play. Let's let's have a little game. Let's yeah. yeah you know, cool. So let, let me let me ask you, right? Let's kind of see yeah. if this works. So, so if I said to you, right, Andrew, I can get you an article in uh, Forbes Middle East, or, or bearded monthly, or bearded monthly. I know which one you'd go for. Um, so so Forbes Middle East, or yeah. uh, let's say Golf Today, okay, which is okay. a local newspaper here, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Where, where, would, where would you, where would you much rather, or where would you think you'd get the most kind of impact back? Yeah, I mean, look, I, in all honesty, I mean, you know, I know, I know golf today, and obviously it's been for those of you who don't know, it's uh, one of the, I guess, four news national newspapers here, um, and 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 kind of topples for third and fourth position, let's say. Uh, I mean, look, I'd, I'd I'd go for, I think that Forbes would have would have more credibility, let's say, um, you know, in, in, in line with kind of us and, and how we'd want to represent ourselves. Um, possibly, I don't know, more reach because it's just, it feels, you know, more like an open brand, let's say, than a, than a kind of newspaper that's, 
golf today. Sure. Okay, cool. So in Google's world, they class, uh, the, so the domain authority of Forbes with least is 75. Okay. Right. And the domain authority for golf today is also 75. Okay. So, so uh, whereas, okay. You might, yeah, whereas you might get some kind of, you know, short term impact, uh, because yeah. maybe more people will see or whatever. Actually, the reality is in Google's world, you'll get exactly the same impact back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So but you mentioned so something it, interesting. So more vanity then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's fine, right? If you think, yeah. okay, actually having my personal brand out there is important. Not an issue, yeah. right? Let's, let's focus yeah, on yeah. getting, um, you know, let's, let's focus on getting you in, in Forbes. Yeah. But what about this one? Okay. If I said to you, okay, you can get in Forbes Middle East versus yep. uh, Arabian business. It's a local business okay. magazine over here. All right. Um, I'd say that was that was a I'd say that was more of a tougher decision just because Arabian business feels more like where we may want to, you know, kind of place ourselves. Um, but, but I guess the thing is it's still very much uh, like a regional player. And if you have a conversation and say, oh, you know, or even if you send a link and say, oh, I was in Arabian business versus I was in Forbes, perhaps to people back home or in the States, I think I'd probably still I mean, I'm nervous now because, you know, it, I got, got I got bitten by golf. So, but I'll, I'll still, I'll go on, I'll, I'll still go for Forbes. I'll still, I'll still okay. go for Forbes. <laughs> All right. So again, Forbes Middle East, the main authority. So Google's yeah, kind of high, way 75, of yeah. 75. Yeah. Uh, Arabian business is 84. <laughs> and, and actually that's a substantial difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Substantial, substantial. And, and there'll be different reasons for that. So Arabian business has been around longer than Forbes at least. Right, um, okay. You know, so, it, so it's not just about, yeah. hey, I've got the Forbes name, therefore it, it deserves yeah, to yeah. No, okay. You've still got to build your own brand and reputation. So, and that's why I think Google's algorithm actually works pretty well for this. So, so yeah, look, so the point is Arabian business, you know, perhaps they might equally get you kind of short-term exposure, but in the long term. Uh, yeah. Arabian business is going to essentially help your business out a lot more, a lot more, right? Right. right. Yeah, yeah, difference yeah. of a difference of nine is pretty significant when we're talking in the Google uh, in domain yeah. authority world. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Clearly, I lost that game show. Uh, we have to do a growth show game show, and uh, yeah, I, I, I lost both. So, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, so look, so this this does bring us back onto that kind of process right so once you have kind yeah. of identified and i think this is it you want to use data and science to identify publications not just perceived yes. uh, not just perceived value or prestige and, right? and, and prestige and yeah I, I there's there's a huge you know if you if you liken this across to social with vanity right the amount yeah. of followers that you have and the amount of likes that you get you know does that really equate to business no Right. Right. Exactly. Um, so, you know, this, when you start to pull in these metrics and, and really understand, you know, how, how they can impact your bottom line, essentially, that becomes far more important than the fact that I'm in Forbes magazine instead of Arabian business. Yeah. And I think, I think if we look at it, if, if it was a Forbes versus Arabian business, for example, you'd share it on LinkedIn, you'd share it on Facebook, you'd show family and friends and blah, blah, blah. Right. You do all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. After a week, no one really cares, right? And so, yeah. Yeah. right, and post post that point, then if you have got a machine that's working in the background and that machine's called Google and they're going yeah. to use what's been done to really kind of, you know, help you and help your business, well, you'd go for Arabian yeah. business all day long. Every right? time. I don't, think, yeah. right? and yeah. I don't think there's any kind of debate with that because, because that's, that's the long-term sustainable impact of that activity rather than the short-term vanity you know kind of prestige blowout still yeah, room for both yeah. but you know if you have a choice like you know i think with, with data and evidence you go for you go for the latter and then yeah. look, i think the other and like i said it moves on to the next part where actually part of this is potentially going out there and pitching to different publications pitching to different uh podcasts perhaps um you know because but there's so many options available right so you know again most of these guys who, who understand the value of this will say well We'll give you a paid editorial or an advertorial, whatever it is. I mean, you mentioned that before. You know, again, the reality is, is if you wanted to kind of, you know, show people an article, how much difference does it make? A lot of these guys don't even disclose advertorials today. 
Um, yeah. You know, and, and I guess, you know, there is a real kind of fine line because I know we've read articles and we've, you know, especially when we were building our kind of digital PR play up and, and we've looked at it and said, I wonder if that's an, uh, an advertorial because, yeah, you know, it just, you know, and, and like I said, it's, I think there's a fine line. So, so again, I don't think people need to kind of obsess too much about um, how that content gets onto a website, as long as that content gets onto a website. I mean, being practical, I think is, is much more important because a million people who may never see that article are now going to be exposed to your brand through search. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. now you're ranking higher. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then and look, the final piece from a kind of process perspective is still content, right? You still need quality content. So, mm. you know, again, you're not going to be able to pitch to any of these publications uh, or any publication unless you've got content of some form and unless that content is, is, uh, is decent, you know? So we're talking about, you know, whether it's data, whether it's insights, whether it's even an infographic, whatever it is, right? How can you yeah. kind of speak to people who, who that actually audience. really want that? Yeah. yeah. Um, because again, there's no point just publishing content for the sake of pub publishing content, right? That content no. does need to kind of have, uh, have value. Yeah. And, and like you said, if, if Google have come out there and said, listen, guys, this is, you know, this is the algorithm change next year. It's going to be based on engagement. That engagement's only going to be driven by good quality content. Yeah. It's not going to be yeah. driven by anything else, right? Yeah, precisely. And it's, you know, it's one, there's one more thing. And I guess, I don't know if we save it for later, but do you know, it's, no, actually, let's save it. Let's move on. Don't forget. No, I've got to be, that's the problem now, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> right. You got like that. Oh, yeah, that's it. I talked about last week. Um, so, look, I mean, I think then, so, yeah, you know, we, we, I'd, I'd like to think now anyone that's kind of listening or anyone that's watching us um, gets it, right? Um, they're, they're kind of like, okay, cool. And, and this may be a revelation to some people. It may be, yeah, cool, okay. I've kind of thought about this, but in a different like frame, let's say, not, not necessarily digital PR, it may be content, right? Or, or just kind of producing content. So they haven't actually attached those two words to it. Uh, well, three, I guess, press release, right? But anyway, two, two, uh, three, three words. Um, so going back to, you know, your, your, I mean, you said, obviously there's still, there's still room for, for both. Right. Um, but I mean, but, 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 but where is that, that role then? Like, where does it sit? Where's the balance now, right? From a traditional to, to this, what is that? You know, it's, it's difficult because so many traditional PR agencies, I think, have, have seen challenges because, again, people care for less print media and things like that nowadays. Yeah. And that, and that shift to online has meant that a lot of uh, PR agencies, I think, have come into the digital world. Um, yeah, they've, they've, they've started to, yeah. you know, you've seen it, they, it firsthand where they've moved into social media, they've moved into influencers. Yeah. Um, you know, I think most PR agencies now are, are kind of diversifying their services, right? Yeah. The, the, the challenge I see that they may potentially have because, and then purely, you know, you, you can solve a lot of challenges by hiring good people and hiring the right people. Um, but the challenge I feel with with a lot of PR agencies is they're not data and analytics isn't really ingrained into what they do, right? Yeah. And and no. and this is so much about technical analytics and data and things like that. None of this stuff is very difficult, but unless your head head is kind of wired that way, um, it's it's difficult to really kind of understand that value. Because I'm sure I can sit there with a you know with a PR person and they'd be like, no, of course you want to have your article in Forbes and I'd be like well it's the same yeah, impact as having it in golf today I don't really care yeah. right yeah you know and, yeah. and and they'll be telling me a million, million reasons why I'd be going maybe one way or another you know yeah, yeah yeah right so so but actually for me I'd be looking at what's that net result and if the net exactly. result is exactly the same well then I'm going to look at cost right yeah does my cost go down to potentially go into golf today rather than Forbes if it does, yeah. well, that becomes more interesting for me, right? Especially when we're saying yeah. the net impact is the same, right? So, so same. I think net, yeah. yeah. So being able to calculate net impact, I think, is 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 very kind of crucial in this. 
Um, mm. but, but you know what, Andrew? That, that crossover, I think, has also gone both ways. Okay. So whereas, whereas digital, uh, sorry, whereas uh, PR firms are like, you know, kind of, you know, hey, we also do now digital marketing or social media or whatever it is. If you'd have told me five years ago that we would have 10, almost 10 full-time writers working for yeah. us right now, um, yeah. who, who, are, who basically consist of journalists and editors, right? I would yeah. never have believed you, right? I would never have, I'd yeah. be like, that's not our space, right? We're, we're yeah. far too technical for that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I mean, if you, I think if you ask them, they wouldn't be thinking of working for us. Right, right. But that's the reality today, right? We've, we've you know, yeah. we're now close to the sort of double figures of, of guys that have been writing for the last 15 or 20 years, you know, very kind of yeah. skilled writers, journalists. Yeah. Uh, we've, you know, we, we've actually, and, you know, I say this kind of tongue in cheek, but actually I know it's true. We've got more writers than half of magazines in Dubai at the moment. Yeah, no, no. And, that, and that's the truth. No, no. That's yeah. the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so you kind of think of that shift in dynamic, right? In terms of now, yeah. you know, what's going well, on? Well, we, we, we launched a magazine, right? <laughs> we launched a magazine. That's <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. We're a publisher but, as well now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, this, but this is it, right? It's, so that crossover yeah. is definitely there. And so again, today, uh, whereas I would almost say that, you know, PR kind of almost had that uh, monopoly for content, you know, because they had guys who were writing press releases and all that kind of stuff yeah. today. Um, actually, I think that you know that that crossover is very clear now, and it wouldn't surprise me if we've got you know more writers, full time writers, than even PR agencies now. You know, of a similar yeah. size. Yeah. You know, because again, I think it's much more strategic in terms of what we're doing that content. So, so look, I yeah. think I think I think that's that's kind of important as well. Okay, so so look, we're we we're, we're, we're closing in on the hour. And we like to we like to nip this in. So before we kind of get into, you know, how difficult is this? So you know, we've we've obviously you know we've 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 kind of I, I think obviously in our shows we always tell people how to go about things. So so that's a key part of what we offer from a value perspective. Before we dive into that, can you remember what you wanted to say? Have you already said it? I haven't said it, and I just remembered. So so um... <sighs> okay. Uh, I'll save it. If we get time at the end, it's not important now. Amazing. Context right, is okay. So I've given, I've <laughs> given Amit two opportunities now. So there must be something playing on his mind or he doesn't want to say it. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, so, so yeah, look, oh, so how difficult is it then? So, you know, for, for those organizations that like the sound of this, um, you know, they, they, they feel like they want to kind of dip their toes. Uh, what's, what's the process, right? I mean, how difficult is it, right? I think first and foremost, and then, you know, what, what, what's the opportunity? So kind of two questions there, how difficult and what's the opportunity? Okay, so actually in terms of how difficult it is, the answer is uh, actually not too difficult. You know, we, we did speak about the processes and things like that. Yeah. Um, we, we, ne we never kind of plug ourselves or what we do on this show, that's not what we do, but, um, but I might just make a small exception. But essentially, <laughs> we've, if you're working with a digital PR partner, um, there's a different way of going about things. So, so what we've been trying to work on is, okay, look, how do we make PR or digital PR more accessible to companies? Um, especially today when people don't want to sign up for long-term retainers and things like that, or expensive retainers. Yeah. And so, you know, for the last sort of year or so, we've been kind of working away at this uh, pretty aggressively. And so today, if somebody says, right, I've got a plumbing business, and I want to kind of, you know, I need some digital digital PR, I need some exposure, I need to be in some plumbing trade journals and all that kind of stuff. Um, how do I do it? Well, we've actually got a database now of about 15,000 publications that are ready to work with us. Okay, so these are people that we've reached out to, people that we've spoken to, worked out different sort of collaboration opportunities. Uh, some of those are just very simple uh, paid articles. Um, and others are kind of more interesting, whether it's kind of rich media, it might be podcast opportunities, it might be things like that. Now, okay. the reality is that by going through this approach, and especially where we do have commercial agreements in place with some of these publications, um, well, you might end up getting a, the value of a I don't know, Arabian business type article 
with a domain authority of 85 or 86 or whatever it was, uh, 84 it was actually, um, but you could get essentially the same impact for maybe even a thousand dollars, right? And so you, right. you know, and if you had one of those a month, well, suddenly rather than spending five or ten thousand dollars a month on on PR retainers, maybe it's a kind of you know play for uh, pay for play model, right? Yeah. Where essentially it's like, hey, I wouldn't mind being you know listed on this website, um, you know, an article published there, you know, as rich as you want with videos, whatever you want on there, and um, and we would just facilitate that whole process, and yeah. and. Actually, the last point, and this was the point that I kind of wanted to add in earlier, but I found context. The key to working with an agency that understands digital marketing and SEO and all of those sort of intricate elements around it versus traditional PR is I've seen people um, who have had wonderful articles listed in Arabian Business and Forbes and all those, and for whatever reason, they haven't gone back and told Arabian Business or Forbes or whoever these publications are that the link that they need has to be a follow link. It has to be a link that Google can follow. And yeah. what happens is these guys have overlooked the fact that there's a no follow link, which is basically those publications, high, high value publications telling Google, don't follow this link. It doesn't mean anything. And essentially all of that kind of hard work that's been done is just lost. So that company, yeah. irrespective of that high value link, they'll get never any credit for it. What we do is we guarantee that every link that's created um, is is a follow link that, so that people get guaranteed kind of SEO juice from the back of it. Yeah. yeah. So, so easy, Perfect. just, yeah, just speak to us and we'll kind of help you out. Yeah, that's it. That, that's all we need to do. <laughs> it's, it. it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's easy to start, just talk to us. Okay, great. Um, we've nailed it that one hour, that one hour point. Um, so thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you for watching. Obviously, you can reach out to myself and Amit on LinkedIn, give us a shout, give her a holler, uh, or you can email growth show at digitalnexa.com if you have any questions. Um, we really appreciate you listening, really appreciate you watching. We've got kind of a dedicated uh, following now that we see uh live every week and then also we have you know kind of a great following of people that perhaps don't have the ability to watch us or listen to us live and, and kind of catch up with us during the course of the week so thank you to uh thank you to everyone for for that um and uh, we look forward to seeing you all i guess next week Amit. yeah yeah absolutely take care guys have a great week excellent all right guys have a great week see you later bye see you.